On today's show, we have the very energetic and very talented David Perez, Santa Clara County's Poet Laureate. Hello, I'm Erica Goss, and this is Word to Word. Today, my guest is David Perez. David, welcome to the show. Thanks. My pleasure. David currently serves as the Poet Laureate of Santa Clara County. He's also worked closely with South Bay Poets and Arts, or arts Organizations to establish readings, workshops, and other forms for poetry to thrive. He is a recipient of the Arts Council Silicon Valley Fellowship for the Literary Art, a repeat guest on NPR Story telling series Snap Judgment, and the author of a poetry collection, Love in a Time of Robot Apocalypse from Right Bloody Publishing. In 2012, David was voted Best Author in the Bay by San Francisco Bay Guardian. He currently lives in San Jose. You can learn more about David at poetlaureateblog.org or follow him on Twitter at dperezer. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot that you've done. Um, David, I'm very interested in how you plan to continue the legacy of the Poet Laureate appointment that was established by the two previous Poets Laureate, but also what are you going to do that's different? What are you going to do that's, that really is something that comes from your experience and what you see as your gift to this position? Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, I think that what remains the same uh, is the overarching goal of mm -hmm. the Poet Laureate position. And that is, um, quite simply, to, to make poetry more available and accessible to people in their daily lives. You know? mm -hmm. So the goal is not to have uh, a bunch of poets reading poetry to rooms full of other poets. The goal is to get poetry sort of out there and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, find its enclaves and find its places where it's thriving and then give those places a voice put those places more in the spotlight so that people in other places throughout the county can just see what's going on with poetry and see that it is a living, breathing thing that people are in fact doing, you know? It's not something that only, you know, like dead British people were considered <laughs> with, you know, uh, yeah, right. concerned with. It's something exactly. that we are doing here and now today. Um, and so that is something that, that, that is a, you know, a tradition that, that began with, with Nils Peterson and that mm -hmm. Sally Ashton carried on, you know, making poetry accessible to people in, on a, in a general way. Um, and that's what I intend to do too. Where I think I differ is in, I, I have certain areas of focus, you know, based on my experience and, and what I've been working on over the last maybe like, you know, five, six, seven years. And one of those things is youth. So I'm going to do a lot, mm -hmm. uh, a lot more youth programming mm -hmm. than I think the previous two laureates. And that is because, you know, there's, I have experience doing that. And also, and also I'm a bit younger. The, the poet laureates yeah. keep on getting a little bit younger, yeah. you know, as we go That's on. That's true. The next one, I think at the going rate, the next one's going to be like 12 years old. So, <laughs> yeah, right. um, but, the trend uh, continues for be, sure. you know, because of my age, I'm a little bit younger. Um, I think that that helps me a little bit uh, with relating to the youth. You know, mm -hmm. and um, it, it helps me have a bit of a shared sort of experience or shared language with them, and I, quite simply, I just love that work. You know, um, right, I've right. taught, I've been teaching um, youth poetry workshops pretty consistently over the last few years, and so mm -hmm. continuing that and creating programming that is sort of youth friendly. And it, it's not that everything I do is going to be you, you know, solely youth focused right. or anything like right. that but that, that I want to bring them in more and nurture that and sort of pave the way for them and kind of show them that, that um, poetry is something that they can do, something that they can get something out of, and that being a writer and an artist, it, it's possible that you can have a, you know, a professional art, arts career. Yeah. It does occur. You yeah. know? So yeah, showing no them that, that that is a reality is, I think, important to me. That, I think that's really powerful, David, that you are modeling that in your own life and that you're able to show young people who may have those same ambitions but have 
no idea how to go about achieving what you've achieved, mm -hmm. that you're giving them the benefit of your expertise. Can you talk a little bit about um, the workshop idea that you have for more advanced sure. students? Yeah, sure. Or people that want to, they want to take their poetry out into the public. Yeah, so, well, one thing I've been doing for the past, you know, like six or seven years, is I've been teaching uh, poetry workshops uh, at the sort of in intro level mm -hmm. um, in uh, elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools, and even the occasional university um, sort of throughout the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. and, um, and one thing that, that, I, that I noticed, one problem that was important for me to address early on was the lack of arts education in a lot of areas, a lot of areas um, where the population is underserved. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so, you know, it's, it's, um, it's rare, I think, these days in a lot of schools for there to be a creative writing program at all. It is rare. You know, maybe in yeah. English class, you know, poetry is, there's that. like a poetry unit where they read a little bit of Shakespeare, right. but that, it, it, in the, and then it might end there. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to go into those schools, as many of them as I can, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and do a poetry workshop that focuses on the hands-on experience mm -hmm. of writing and uh, figuring out a creative process so that your ideas, so that the students' ideas and the students' words can be, can, can be heard and mm -hmm. like seen mm -hmm. and you know, developed into poetry. I've been doing that and it's, and it's been going well, it's great work, but there's another problem and the problem is that, is that those, those classes are for 30 students at a time. Yes. And some of them Huge gravitate amount. to it more than others. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, there are students that, that have sort of the drive. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they, they, they want to do it, and they want to take poetry a step further. For right. the students who don't want to do that, that's fine, you know? Like, you're there in a, at an age where they need to go off and do all kinds of things, and right? They and they gotta find Exactly. Yeah. But, but I always have at least a few who want to take it further. And there's always some limitation, you know, in terms of my time or in terms of what program resources or, or whatever that sure. that's not always um, possible to happen. But now, um, at, now that I'm poet laureate, I have a unique opportunity to give more. Yes. In in in, in those in that context, mm -hmm. and so that's what I intend to do. And the goal of my poetry workshops now are to still give those introductory level courses, but then to develop an, an after school program, a series of after school programs mm -hmm. in as many areas within the county as I can um, where I help students develop and polish poems and then have it come full circle and give them an opportunity to actually read those poems side by side with adult professional level poets at a proper poetry reading. That's you such know, a great so idea, it's David. not like that. your poem is not something that mom just <laughs> just magnets to the refrigerator, right? <laughs> right it's right. something that you read in a in a professional artistic setting, yeah. and I want to give them that experience. I want to show them that 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 art is is to yeah. be taken seriously, and so. it's also to be shared with your audience, and that. I'm, that's like the value of taking a drama class. It teaches sure. you to create a persona sure. and to deal with an audience. Um, that's one of the most valuable things about public speaking. And poetry yeah, yeah. is, you know, I mean, without public speaking, poetry just sits in a book. And I think what your, uh, your idea to, to partner student poets with professional poets or with well-known poets mm -hmm. is just brilliant because I think that that will give them the feeling of, that their work, their work is just as important as these people's work, and mm -hmm. that they'll be in company of mentors, possibly, and friends who can help them in the future. So yeah. that's the part that I thought was so unique, is that, that I'd never heard of anyone doing that before. Yeah. And that part is, is really wonderful. I really, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what wonderful things you guys cook up in these workshops. Yeah, and if they, um, and it, 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 maybe there are future poets, and maybe there are future poetry yeah. audience, maybe there are future poetry readers, you know. It's, All of um, which are important, yeah. right? All three are equally important. Yeah. We know that we don't, you know, we need good audiences, and we need to cultivate those. And then, of course, we need writers, and we need people to support writers. So I, th I think it's brilliant. It's a really wonderful. You're here. Yeah. <laughs> wonderful idea, David. Um, so we're going to go now to a clip of you, and you were reading at the Oakland James Moore Theater, or the James Moore Theater in Oakland, mm -hmm. um, and this is a reading you did with Snap Judgment. Now this brother 
He's an educator, a poet, a writer. There is nothing he cannot do. Mr. David Perez. <laughs> Fearing that I would lose my roots, my grandma brought me to a quinceanera. Now this was just one of many insurrections to make sure that I did not bleach under an American sun. I remember Sunday mass and its three hour ceremony held completely in Spanish at the church of Our Lady of Perpetual Guilt. I went to places whose rituals were as strange to me as their language was foreign. Dia de los Muertos, Cinco de Mayo parades, banda shows. If you don't know, banda is a form of music. It came out in the 30s when Mexicans began mingling with German Americans in Texas, creating a fusion between mariachi and polka. <laughs> Together at last. <laughs> but my grandma taught me the steps, told me that dance is the language of the soul. Tienes que permanecer mexicano, hijo, she'd say. This will help me remain Mexican. Wow, I'm, I'm just so enthralled by that. I love that clip of you. And, um, Thank you. I love how you, um, how you get us involved, and you're teaching us about culture, and you're teaching us about um, the power of relatives, the power of our ancestors in sure. our lives. But you make it so funny and so delightful. Like your audience was just with you totally on that. They were great that night. Yeah, that was a great audience. Like we were saying, you need good audiences. Um, that leads me up to my next question that I'd like to pose to you, David, is how would a young person, let's say, in one of your workshops, look at you and look at something like that and say, how do I get there? How do I become a professional poet? Mm -hmm. You can, mm -hmm. you, maybe you can enlighten us. Yeah, um, well, I think that um, it starts off with nothing fancy. It starts off with just working really hard on the work itself. Yeah, and right. you know, the like, thing we don't uh, want to hear. <laughs> I remember, I remember my one of my mentors, one of my um, creative writing teachers when I was as an undergrad. Um, she asked me, um, uh, w w "What are you going to do after college? Or, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to try to publish? You, you know, like I really like your work, blah blah blah, this and blah yeah, blah that." Yeah. She was being very gracious, you know. Of course, right. And uh, and I said, you know. I'm just gonna write. I'm just. I'm just gonna write until I until I write something that I that I'm really really happy with. Mm -hmm. And and she, and I don't know. She just gave me this look like I had given the right answer. You uh -huh. know, like like oh thank God he said that. You know, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. I think it's it just begins with just committing to the process of writing creatively, yeah. and and just being honest with yourself and, and with the page and just committing committing to to the act of, of um, developing your craft. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, that means lots of different things, and we can go on and on about, about what it means, but I think whatever it means for you, do it. Yeah. And just do it and do it and do yeah. it and do it and do it and do it, and then, and then eventually it'll probably work. You'll yeah. probably create something that you're, that you're proud of. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and if, if other people around you start recognizing that too, then it's like you're... You're kind of on on your way. If if what you're concerned with is is publishing and getting gigs and being a professional poet, right. um, if you're not, of course that's fine. Just you keep doing it anyway, you mm -hmm. know. Because what's mm -hmm. important is that it gives something back to you. Yes, absolutely. You know? But that but if you are interested in you know like you know being being on stage or being mm -hmm. in a book or or whatever, then I think you commit to the process and you stick with it, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and then. Slowly, you know, you, you you meet other people, and and you. Um, in my case, it was through. Uh, it began through Slam, mm -hmm. you know, Slam mm -hmm. poetry yeah. competition, yes. which is this game that poets play, where they memorize their poems and they mm -hmm. go up on stage and they, you know, spit them out sort of in this larger than life kind of way. Sure, sure. And um, and you do that for long enough, mm -hmm. and the Slam in the city next door will pay you a little bit of money to come out and read your poems there right. as like as like the featured reader. Right. You do that for a while and then and then you can go on a tour. Mm -hmm. You know, you can go across the United States, you can go to Canada, you can go all over the place and yeah. and do that, you know? Yeah. 
and then you get recognized for doing for doing that, and then and then you might um, you know like enter enter a poetry writing contest, or you might enter mm -hmm. enter a contest to get a book published, and mm -hmm. that's exactly what happened to me. And I you know I, I have to be honest and say that part of it is luck, you know, like part and of it hard work. is. It's hard, it's very work, hard work, but then I it's think. like there, there is, there is also luck. But mm -hmm. um, I think that that where where you bridge the gap between the two is in just putting yourself out there. Yeah, like making yeah. sure the work is what you what you need it to be. Right. But then once it's there, you just work at putting yourself out there. Take mm -hmm. gigs, perform, perform, perform. Yes. You know, enter the contests. Um, you know, submit to the journals. Submit, 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 mm -hmm. and you know, develop a tough skin because you'll you'll need it. Yes. You know, yes. because you will be rejected. Rejection it will, it is will part happen, of it. You know, but you got to learn yeah. to like. Got to learn to like love it. You know. Yeah, it means yeah. you're doing something. Yeah, right. It means you're. Well, I think that um, you're you really reinforce something that I try to tell people who ask me the same kind of question is that poetry in the book is great, but it's just one venue. You know, poetry is meant to be shared with other people. It's meant to be spoken out loud, really. I think even more than read to yourself quietly. It's an experience that you can have with an audience. It is. Which is sort of amazing. Sure. It's really wonderful yeah. that, that you can do that. Um, and you're, you're cultivating that with your audiences. Mm -hmm. You're teaching them that they can have that experience, listening to stories live. Yeah. which is an experience that will never come again. It's just this one thing that happens. It's, it's, you know, it's spontaneous. It's like and theater it's, in that It's way, like where theater, It, it exists yeah. in time at this one point, and then right. it's gone. You know? And then, which you know, nice. yeah. and to recreate that, um, I think that's an experience that audiences and the performer mm -hmm. love to have together. Yeah. And they can only have it in a live setting. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm yeah. glad you mentioned that, because the, the, that, that piece that we just showed, that piece actually is not in my book. Ah. Because it's meant to be a piece like that. That's something more akin to, to, to theater. Yeah. I mean, it's not theater. It's not yeah. the same thing. Yeah. But it, it, it exists in time in a similar way where I really felt that that piece on the page wasn't meant for the page. It was meant to be here in be front of you right now. To read and it. then it's gone. And then maybe yeah. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. Know? Well, I, I think it wouldn't be the same to read it. No, it wouldn't you know, be. It would be, it'd be yeah. a different experience. Not better, not worse, just different. Yeah. Well, David, it's time for us to hear some poem, poetry from you. Would you okay. read us a couple of poems? I'd be happy to. David has published this book, Love in a Time of Robot Apocalypse, and it is from therightbloodypress.com. And um, I'm going to have David read to us. Okay, sure. Let me see. I'll do this one. I'll do, I'll do maybe two or three real short ones. Okay. You know, that sounds that great. That way it's kind of easily yeah. digestible. So this poem is called uh, To Shadow Boxing. To Shadow Boxing. I think about you when real life is filled with bad dialogue. During work and couples therapy, my attention drifts to you. Together we have learned how to give exactly as much as we receive. I share balmy rooms with you where we cut the air as if we think something is going to bleed from it. There is a way of fearing age and fading beauty that only comes to men without children on quiet nights when the rent is paid. I'm tired of spitting into the wind and feeling only air. We may never know the results of our kind words. Our arias will float over the heads in the crowd. But you, travel at a certain speed. Repeat an exact number of times. When we're together, you comb laughter from the hills. When we're apart, I remember your burn, real as a wish in a fountain. Wow, that was beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you, David. Uh, maybe one or two more? Please. Okay. Yes, absolutely. All right. Here's one. Um, this one is, 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 is newer. This one's newer. This one actually is, is not in the book. I just wrote it, and I really like it. Um, this one's called um, On Skinny Dipping Alone. Great title. A pastime of mine. All right. <laughs> Dear Ocean, tonight you might as well be a bedpan. Watching you used to be like watching the door to a time machine hissing open. Now, I look into you and see a man who could ruin a microwaved burrito. 
You spam the air with information even archive.org wishes it could forget. Ocean, you will never understand what this life really is. Me, well, it is what I make of it. Ocean, L-M-F-A-O. The last time I swam in you, I felt like a roofie in a gin fizz. Looking way down into your lacquer was like gazing up from a Ferris wheel car at the highest point of its arc back on shore. A dead seal exposed its teeth like the moon was a camera flash and it was saying cheese. That one. Beautiful. One more? I'll do one more. Okay. Do one more here. Okay. This poem is called Laugh Track. Laugh Track. The joke is only funny when you don't get it. Today was like the others. An applause sign gone haywire flashing before the punchline. The second hand scraped the grime the chimney sweep must have missed. Hashtags filled our cups, their voices rising like curses from wells. Medusa was, de Medusa was demoted to worms. She slithered to the water cooler, put a drop in each little mouth, gave them names, the way Jane from accounting did with the pencils after the miscarriage. Jerry wore his tie at half-mast for the sprinkler's leaking tears. The hour hand crept and crept as if it had a throat to slit. The police helicopter flew as if guiding someone home, a lost child or a couple new to the city, its searchlight waving long brush strokes over the east side. Those were beautiful, David. Thank you. Thank you. You are Thank a you. talented poet. I love the brush strokes. I just, that was the light in the brush strokes. It's wonderful. Um, tell us about your upcoming plans. I know you have mm. a full plate as Poet Laureate. It's too big to go into now, sure, but yeah. tell us what you have coming up and tell us about the poetry booth. Right. So the poetry booth is something that I've done to a very limited extent um, in the past, mm -hmm. um, but this year um, I've partnered with uh, the folks over at the Anno Domini Art Gallery oh, yes. who put on um, cool. some arts festivals mm -hmm. uh, th uh, throughout the year, and we're going to be doing a poetry booth called The Poetry Site. And it is going to be at the Sub-Zero Arts Festival in June, mm -hmm. June 6th, okay. Friday, June 6th. And it's going to be at the San Jose Street Market on um, the first Friday of August mm -hmm. and the first Friday of September. Okay. I'm also going to be working to do it in other cities because that's important. I, I, it's to, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to work to bring it to Palo Alto, Gilroy, and maybe a few maybe other Los places. Gatos. So I'm hoping to. I'm working yeah. on it all right now. <laughs> but um, what it great. is, is quite simple. It's quite simply what we do is we write custom poetry for the people mm -hmm. that come to arts festivals. Fantastic. So they come, there's other booths, there's food, there's stuff going on. Mm -hmm. We are there as one of the booths. And if you come and talk to us, just give us a three, four minute conversation where mm -hmm. we get maybe some key words from you. We get just a sense of who you are and kind of what makes you tick. Mm -hmm. And we write a poem for you right there on the spot. We have a whole staff of poets, and we have manual typewriters. Really cool. Oh, that's like, great. Manual typewriters. That's great. Like, you have the typewriters. And we're just like clickety clack, clickety clack, you know, <laughs> for it. hours and hours I love it. out there writing custom poems for people. We give we give each person a, 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 a copy of their poem, and it really is their poem, like uh -huh. something that a poet wrote just for them. It mm -hmm. wouldn't exist without them. 
and right. and it's something that they can sort of take and just have as their own. But then we also keep copies, and you know we ask everyone's permission. Oh, can we put this maybe up on our website or put sure, it on the poetry sure, yeah. blog or you know? And we hope to actually have like a collection of poem poems that we that we have permission to kind of show um, as like booth. yeah as yeah. kind of like an ebook too. You know? Yeah. So that's what it is. So, that's great. Like, you know, that's for for, all, for anyone watching, um, you know, come come to the Sub Zero Arts Festival, come to Street Market. Um, They're a lot it'll, of fun. It will be a good time. They we are. will be doing it other places too, though. Don't don't yeah. fret. <laughs> yeah. The poetry booth will be around. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, David, it's been so wonderful to talk to you. The scent of orange blossoms. My father braked hard, kicked the car door open, and dancing disappeared into the orchard, shouting, do you smell them? Do you smell? And into my freeway leaded childhood, the scent of orange blossoms wafted like a stranger's perfume. My guest, David Perez, has memorized a lot of his poetry, and so I thought that I would share that poem with you, which I memorized some time back. Memorizing poetry is a very good thing to do. It helps you in all kinds of ways. It helps you with your own memory, and it helps you to appreciate the cadences of poetry and the beauty of language. I encourage everyone to memorize a poem, say it to yourself often, and share it with other people. It's time for announcements. Before I start, I'd like to let you know that all of these announcements are available at my website, www.ericagoss.com. Go to the links page and you will see all of the places where these announcements will be. Every month, I will choose a poem to read on the air, a poem from the community. So send me a poem. You can send it to my email, ericagoss at comcast.net, and I will choose one to read every month. So Please send me your poems. I would love to see and hear and read what the community has to say about poetry, or your poems, rather. I want to remind everyone that the Poetry Podcast is still available to you to enjoy. It's at losgatospoetlaureate.wordpress.com. That's the blog I started specifically for it. You can listen to a variety of poems that were um, recorded by many members of the community and in many different languages. So I hope you will go and enjoy that poetry. There's also photography to go with the poems. There's still time to donate to the Los Gatos Poets, Poet Laureate Scholarship in Creative Writing, which will be given to a senior at Los Gatos High School. Send an email to ericagoss at comcast.net for, for information on how to donate to the scholarship. It will be given this year. So please send your donations donations in as soon as possible. Coming in April, National Poetry Month 2014, 30 Days of Poetry. There will be a poetry activity for every day of the month. These will be announced on Facebook, via email, and on my website, www.ericagoss.com. There will be readings, activities for you to follow, and lots of fun all throughout the month of April. I'm looking forward to it. I'm very pleased to announce that my latest book, titled Vibrant Words, Ideas, and Inspirations for Poets, will be published in April of this year, 2014. You can get a copy from Pushpen Press at pushpenpress.com, Amazon, and from your local independent booksellers. You can still purchase a copy of my chapbook, Wild Place, from Finishing Line Press on Amazon at our very own Village House of Books in Los Gatos, and at Bookshop Santa Cruz. I'd like to thank my guest, David Perez, viewers like you, and Rainbow Graphics and Video. I'm Erica Goss, and this is Word to Word. <laughs>